Hello, everybody. I'm here with the Japanese train, a.k.a. Matt. And I'm Master of the Lemons, a.k.a. Lemmy. And today is our 16th episode of Character Gallery. And that being said, I'm sure that you can figure out who it is that we're going to be talking today. Yeah, that's right. We've we've set a very dangerous precedent. Uh, we, we did this with 13. Now we're doing it with 16. Episode 16 is 16. But only because their name is the number. We're not yeah. going to do... We're not going to do, like, Boko at 5,702. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to do 199 at episode 199. Yeah, That'd yeah, be no, a little weird. We're not going to do Harvey but, at 27, either, which is probably a more reasonable in, and close estimate. <laughs> yeah. And 16 is one of those enigmatic Dark Horse characters, a lot like Smudger, that everyone in the fandom loves. If you were a kid and you had it in your collection, it was cherished. For me, I, 16 was always the Ertl train that I brought on vacations with. He's in this interesting class of character where Smudger is another example of this, definitely. It's like, there is, there's something so fascinating about these two. I might, like, Godred barely had any merchandise, but if he had more, I'd probably roll Godred into this category as well. Characters that have some sort of dark past or dark end to them that, like, you know, that, that are told, their story is told by another character. For Smudger, it was Duke. For 16, it was Wilbert. For Godred, it was Coldy. Um, some, some character talking about their friend they had years ago that something tragic happened to, and you haven't heard about them till now. There's something so exciting about that. I love that. And 16 definitely got off easiest out of everybody. Like, oh, yeah. He just fell over and went, eh, and that was, that was it. That was, you know, he, he got to be preserved and he was fine. Um, but, but I think it's just, there's, I think there's so much to be said about 16, because, I, like, I was reading his story before uh, we started here. And it, like, even though he doesn't say a whole lot of lines, like, I love the illustrations where he has this, like, really devilish, defiant smirk, or when he has this just kind of out-of-it, kind of fed-up expression where he's just like, yeah, whatever, see if I care. The way that he just looks so dismissive in the illustrations, and the way that it's like, you know, he's... He really seems almost purposefully defiant in the story. He really just... He's very much like, well, like a 16-year-old. He's, he's yeah. like the kid... <laughs> he's like a rebellious teen. He's like... Yeah. He really... He's, he's like the rebellious teen that, like, you know, just kind of... Wears you know, a leather wants... jacket, has has <laughs> his hair slicked back, is staring at yeah. his fingernail, and, and listening to 50s music while snapping his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly who 16 is. If I had to describe 16 in one word, just based on the feeling I get off of that story. It would be locomotive. I think I... Okay, okay yeah. No, I'd <laughs> certainly say that. But beyond that, I would say nonconformist. I yeah. think he's the total, like, nonconformist. I'm not doing that. That's lame. That's for the squares. Like, that's, that's him. That's the type of character that he is. Because it's, like, just, like, the fact that he's, like, he just sees that the board says you can't go past here. And all the other engines are like, hey, you can't go up there. And 16 is just like, well, yes, I can. I I'm going to try it anyway. And so it goes up there and then falls off, right? What's so great about 16, too, is that I, I think it's just because of Arse Over Cab from Henry Blue that <laughs> all of his friends look very, you know, they have that BR black. They have that you know very standard look and then you have 16 out here who is this red and yellow engine with the giant 16 painted on his side where he's so distinct right i imagine like like what when was the last time you saw an engine painted bright red on br i even imagine that he like all of his other friends they have numbers too but they would just be like on their builder's plate in 12 point font and he says he says no i want it painted on my side and then it's like a fashion statement it's like yeah and think about the era that he was built in coming up through dieselization isn't really in the picture because i imagine that 16 was built I mean, the, so the austerities were built from 1943 to 1964. Which is just a huge range. I know. You could either have him live through the bulk of dieselization, or you could have him basically miss the whole thing. And I kind of want to do the latter. I feel like 16 is very out of touch. I feel like he hasn't really lived through the like all the gritty, dark stuff. Like I think he's... 
it, look, if you live through dieselization, you're not falling off cliffs because you're stupid. Like, no one does that after dieselization, right? I imagine he's built in, like, 1963 or 64. He, he could be on this, like, the steelworks we see him working in in the story. Maybe that's the only place he's ever worked. Because when Wilbert is talking about, like, his experience in life, he says he's worked at a, several places, and one of them was a colliery. Um, but with, with 16, it's like... I think 16 might have just been built in 1964, the latest possible time for an austerity, and even though dieselization is still going on during that time period, he's trapped at this steelworks. Like, he's not really, he's not really doing much. And so he's not seeing the front line. He's not seeing all this gritty, you know, steam engine destroying stuff going on. He's just at the steelworks like, I, I want to get out of here. I want to see the world. I want to see what's going on. And it's funny because we think about Evening Star as like the last, you know, the yeah. ceremony. Evening Star, oh my god, the last steam engine. But then yeah. these austerities come around. They they're still around. They're like the cockroaches after a nuke. And so... Yeah, <laughs> so yeah when, the austerities hang on for a crazy long time. Into they, the like, 80s. Yeah, Jesus, like the 80s. Like, that's just, that, that's, you know, you can kind of understand why 16 kind of acts like he's invincible, because, I mean, like, I don't know about you, but, like, in the, in the, I kind of always felt like his story took place in the 70s or so. That's yeah. kind of where it feels like it takes place to me. Because it, it feels like an after-dieselization story. It doesn't feel like it's in the heat of things. And that that could tell you a lot about his upbringing. Because yeah. I think that the fact that 16 is built later on is literally built in the last year that they could have been built. And, you know, has pretty much lived through none of dieselization. Can be really good in context. Because I could see 16 then... It's just rebelling against the steam engines that he is forced to live with every day. Like, yeah, he sees I, the diesel engines on the main line. He sees, like... Like, I'm imagining, like, he even sees, like, this Gronk one day, like, come through the yard. And he sees his hazard stripes. He's like, he's like, hey, that's cool. I want some of that. And so he, he comes back to the yard and gets hazard stripes painted on. Like a teen coming home with a piercing. <laughs> and they all look at him, like, dumbfounded. They're like, oh my god, 16, what have you done? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's like totally what he would do i like i just so see he would come into this whole situation kind of in the aftermath of dieselization and so he's surrounded by all these steam engines that by some providence have actually survived this horrible crisis and actually remember it and actually take it seriously right and they've got that and, whole survivorship community going on they're trying to yeah. rebuild and be all serious yeah, exactly. And then you got 16 comes along, and he doesn't have any of that, that experience. He's just like, what, what are you guys all grim about? What are you all so scared of? And it's like, you know, they try to explain to him. It's like, well, for years, diesels were taking over the railways, and we all had to huddle together. And then 16 is just like, his eyes glaze over. He's like, oh, jeez, another history lesson from the old man. Like, I just see him being, because it's just austerities. It's so rare you have an engine, a steam engine that is this much younger than all the other engines. The fact that you can have... Like, austerities were built so far into the 60s, it's like, I think it would be a crime not to have 16 be this younger character, especially considering how he acts. Yeah, it just feels so wrong to have him be built at any other time and, like, live through World War II and the blunt of dieselization. Yeah. That's just not who he is. He's, he just seems so petty. It's like, he how can he be that petty after after all that conflict? Unless he didn't experience it. And I don't think he did. And I just love the idea of, like, 16... He grows up in this environment where these steam engines live through all that stuff. And so they're desperately trying to instill... You know, they're trying to tell him, like, well, you have to be useful. If you're not useful, then they'll get rid of you like that. And it's in 16 is just, like, you know, he hasn't lived that, so he doesn't get it. He's just, he, he, all he hears is all these rules. It's like, you can't go on the main line, that's where all the diesels are. And, and you can't leave this yard, it's too dangerous, and it's blah, 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 right? And 16 is just, like, right. you know, all the squares are putting down all these laws on me. I, I, I don't get it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stick it to the man. I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go and, and kick those conventions. I think it just fits so well, the idea that that's why he gets the hazard stripes. What's great is that 16 really owns his number really well. Like, I think it's so crazy. I, I think of him putting 16 on his tank, and I think of, like, the Northwestern Railway. That's something yeah. that they would do. That's not something that most engines would do is just... Because that's where a nameplate goes. Yeah, and exactly. So, you don't put it on the tank. You put it on, like, the cab or the bunker or something. And, yeah, and, and, you know, I could... 
I could very well see in the rebuilding process all these other engines are like and I imagine they're like packets or like 50s you know Vulcans or something tank engines but they're all like trying to rebuild like give themselves names and stuff and 16 just is like do you want names like none of the none of the Gronks I know over the other shed don't have any names yeah and like whoever the elder engine of the yard is would just be like I told you to stop talking to those Gronks and 16's just like yeah but they're a lot more fun than you squares is all I'm saying right it's like you know that's like you that know, would you be just... so great is if like Oh, if like sixteen is like going and spending too much time with the Gronks. Yeah, he's like it's it's the equivalent of like your rebellious teen sneaking out and going to keg parties and stuff. Yeah, and he's getting into trouble and stuff, getting tattoos, that sort of thing. Where he's just he is. It's it's really interesting because I've never thought about how because usually when you've got steam engines after dieselization that have been you know either preserved or survived because they're still useful. Then they're very they feel very lucky and they're relieved, right? But if if an engine never suffered through anything, then all they see is like all these rules. He doesn't have the context to know that he still needs to keep his head down. Yeah, exactly. He he just he's just annoyed by the fact that all these steam engines are constantly obsessed with proving their worth. They're constantly obsessed with with making sure that sixteen puts on a good show for the manager and shows that he's useful and all that. It's like when the manager comes by, you have to make sure that you show him the utmost respect and that you prove you're very, very useful. Do whatever he says and 16 is just like look look it's, he's not gonna get rid of me well i'm like one year old you know what, what, what's he gonna do come on and besides and, i'm bigger than you anyway <laughs> yeah it's like he'd, i that, wouldn't that just be so great if 16 is like bigger than all the other engines in his yard i could see them trying to like keep him on the plantation and like you know oh we have this pure you know, engine that we can instill our traditional values into. He can, yeah. you know, we have, it's like, it's like after, uh, the Barracuda kills all the eggs in Finding Nemo. It's like, yeah. it's, it's like, like, we can, we can rebuild this one. Like they really want steam to live on and he's the newest engine that there is in their yard. So they really want him to carry on their legacy. But 16 is just annoyed by all this monotonous stuff. You know, he, he's just like, you know, Hold on, what, you, you want to give me a name? Yeah, we want to give you a name. I mean, every steam engine should have a name. All those diesels, those lifeless diesels, just have a bunch of numbers. And, and 16's just like, uh, well, they seem a, like a lot more the life of the party than you. They've got six wheels, I've got six wheels. What's the point? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, like, it really would be, you know, I just, I really think he just has to lack a lot of context about how replaceable he really is. But I think that might also be a good thing from time to time because it's like oh, absolutely. these because en- these engines have lived through dieselization. They're probably really radicalized. They're probably very scared of diesels. They probably don't want them anywhere near their yard. But sixteen doesn't have any of that experience, and so he wouldn't have that prejudice. So when good diesels come along who just want to be useful, um, you know, say say the steelworks wants to bring in a couple diesel shunters. Uh, everyone would unanimously be like, no, no, we don't want them here. They'd have a massive indignation meeting around the turntable yeah. while the diesels are outside the steelworks as to whether or not they're going to accept them. And 16 would be the only voice saying, like, who the hell cares? That was, what, seven years ago? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He'd, like, push his way in, get on the turntable, and I imagine, like, 16 would, like, you know, he he will not shut up. Like, 16 is the type of guy, he could talk for seven hours, and he could just convince everybody there. Just by the end of it, they would be so, like, annoyed with him. It's like, stop just a, arguing! Just a filibuster, sort of. Yeah. They would just be like, God, stop arguing with us! We don't want to argue anymore! And 16's like, I can go all day, alright? Like, because I, I just imagine 16 is great at arguing. Like, he's just, like, really, like... He's just He's very... definitely great at annoying people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just, he's a, he's a really annoying guy that just picks fights, sometimes for no reason, like, just, just because he wants to play devil's advocate. <laughs> He'd look at an 040 and be like, you've got six wheels. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're just... No, I don't, you git. <laughs> yeah, you do, yeah, no, go, go find him, yeah, you definitely do. And they find a mirror. No, no, I really don't. Hmm, okay, well, uh, clearly there's a smudge or something. It's like, it would be like, you know, he would just he would just do that to entertain himself, I could see. He's really just that kind of engine. 
Um, yeah. You know, I think Duncan and 16 would get along really, really well. Because the thing is, 16 and Duncan both share this, like, they're just naturally rebellious characters who just don't like agreeing with the status quo. They just want to stick it to the man really, really badly. It's funny because 16 may actually even be more moral than Duncan because Rusty comes to the yard and Duncan can get radicalized against Diesel's, and I think that 16 would feel... Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I think Duncan abandons the notion within a day. So I think that's pretty remarkable that he, like... James tells him this, right? And, and so then he, you know, he believes James because he doesn't think James is a liar. And then he finds out that he's wrong, and he abandons it within a day, and it's never a problem again. That's fair. And so I think that, I think that Duncan is quite moral in that regard. Um, whereas 16, it's funny because I think at first they would like each other. Like, they would both, like, Duncan, like, Duncan would have key issues that he's, like, against. He'd be like, you know, oh, I hate nationalized railways. That's a terrible idea to nationalize the rail system. And, and 16's like, oh, yeah, I totally agree with that. But then, like, when they get deeper into the conversation, <laughs> Duncan would start asking his... Duncan like, would start he, prattling he, off on narrow gauge stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm imagining Duncan would start getting detailed. He's like, you know, so why exactly don't you, like, nationalize the railways? And, and 16 would just be like, oh, uh... uh and they always give all their engines the same livery. Yeah, I, I can't stand that. That's a real, you know... Yeah, everyone looks the same. And, and Duncan's just like, huh, all right, uh, you know, good talking to you. Like, he wouldn't... Like, he wouldn't... <laughs> Duncan, I think, has actual, real, tangible political beliefs. Whereas, like, 16 kind of just wants to not agree with the majority of people. Yeah, 16 would be all about the aesthetics, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it goes back to, like, the leather jacket, kind of like, you know, he, he would be the, the type to totally get into, like, a goth look. Um, just because he, like, wants to, he wants to piss <laughs> off the squares. That's what he wants to do. Whereas Duncan, Duncan doesn't care if he agrees with the majority. It just happens to be that he genuinely does not agree with the majority on most issues. Like, that's just who he is. Like, he's not faking it. Whereas 16, he's kind of faking it. He's like, he, he just kind of wants to... He like, like, Duncan would not go up onto the tip and fall down. He wouldn't make that mistake because he's not stupid. He'd be like, no, that's a bad idea. I agree with everyone else. Whereas, like, with, with 16... Everyone else says it's a bad idea, and rather than thinking to himself, okay, do I agree with them or do I not? Instead, he's just like, oh, they say it's a bad idea, I'm going to do the opposite. And then he goes up there, right? He's not thinking. He's not smart. He's a lot closer to Thomas, honestly, than he is to Duncan in some respects. He acts kind of like Duncan, like on the surface. Like he wants to be, he, yeah. he's 16, wants to be a Duncan, but he's only acting and looking like a Duncan. Whereas 16, deep down, he is actually a lot more like Thomas. He's irresponsible, he's brash, he, he acts without thinking. It's that sort of thing. It's funny because it feels more like 16 is Thomas built in a different era. Because Thomas yeah. has that whole rebelliousness about tender engines and stuff. And how he, he wants to stand out. And that makes sense in the days of the Big Four. Where it's like, you know, it's all steam... And, you know, the way to be rebellious is to say, well, tender engines shouldn't have all the power. You know, the Flying Scotsman shouldn't be on every poster. Maybe it should be a tank engine now and then. That's, like, a very different type of rebellion. That's, like, in Thomas's day, that was what being rebellious was. Yeah. But now in 16's day, being built in the 60s, it's all about, you know, maybe diesels aren't that bad. Maybe diesels are the good guys. Who knows? You know, like, if you say that around older engines, they will just go off. They'll just be like, oh, no, they are not. You're like... It's like it's this hot button topic. Yeah, and he and he just pushes every button every chance he gets. Yeah, exactly. It's like yes, he just he wants to get the reaction. What's interesting is we're also hearing about this entire story way after the fact, like even that, way. I like, think it's high time we actually brought up Wilbert. <laughs> absolutely, we we've gone this whole time without talking about his own brother, <laughs> yeah. the one who tells us about sixteen to begin with. I have some ideas about Wilbur. Oh, I, I, certainly. Yeah. So I think, so firstly, I just want to put to rest right now. Uh, I know a lot of people think Wilbur and 16 are the same character. 
it's a neat theory, but I just can't get behind it. I love them both so much for different reasons. I can't turn them into the same character. Like, I, from everything that we've said about 16 so far, and just the responsibility and the drive, the ambition, and the good-naturedness that Wilbert has, the yeah, level-headedness like, that Wilbert has, I like unless there's some extreme 180, I... They are they are polar opposites, and I don't know if one could ever really turn into the other. And also, it would it would be a drag to eliminate one character. Yeah, it's like I don't want to put them together; they're too good on their own. Yeah, exactly. It's like I want there to be stories between Sixteen and Wilbert, and I can't do that if they're the same person. But it's like, but th- that's the thing is like I think they really are polar opposites because Wilbert is just so grounded, practical, reasonable. He's just so he's so driven and. I follows all the rules uh whereas 16 is like trying to break every rule in the book L- on literally the anti everything that you just said <laughs> yeah exactly and and so it's like i could totally see like i wonder when wilbert enters 16's story i could imagine like well, i like the notion uh, it could be years later when 16's on his heritage railway but i think it's it's earlier i think it's like imagine if it's like still in the 70s before wilbert's actually preserved well, and so and yeah, so Wilbert, let's let's remember, is also built way before 16. Yeah, when, when, what year is that exactly? So Wilbert is built in 1953. God, so that's way earlier. Because if we're thinking 16 is like late 60s, then that's a big difference. And it's crazy how long this class ran for, like a really long time. It it's ridiculous. It's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. So Wilbur is built and works for a colliery literally from when he was built until 1976 when he was preserved. So that's actually his whole life. Wow. And he actually never got his name. He never became G.B. Keeling until 1981. That's insane. That's a lot of time that Wilbur would not have been Wilbur. He literally went his entire life without being... It, or his entire working life without being Wilbert or G.B. Keeling. He just didn't have a name. Ooh, I, I've i got an idea here. Yeah? So, 16 working at a steelworks, if, you know, you know how it operates, you need coal to operate it. Mm. So, Wilbert working in a colliery is perfect. Yeah, that's so good. That would so, be like, so 16 would be stuck at the steelworks all the time with the squares, right? Uh, and Wilbert would be coming in and out with coal all the time. And so, oh, and what if, wouldn't it be great if, like, imagine if Wilbert understands, because he's older, understands, like, that, you know, steam is on the way out, and that most of the country's already transitioned away from steam. So, so knowing that, Wilbert is now kind of paranoid trying to, like, make a good impression for himself, so that he, he so, so that he kind of earns himself a spot in preservation. Um, however... He's got his own brother on very close by him on another line, yeah. kind of making a bad name for austerities. Goofing around and, and yeah. looking like looking like totally different yeah. to, to Wilbert. Wilbert is towing the line harder than any other engine. And he's miraculously pulling trains. Like he's pulling coal trains in the seventies. And and he's probably seeing him every day. He's delivering coal to this steelworks every single day. And so the two of them are are crossing paths a lot. Maybe sixteen like messes up and pushes over a coal truck or something and delays Wilbert and like that sort of stuff happens all the time. And so so he's like, like, like sabotaging Wilbert a little bit. It would be really interesting if that were the case. That would be great. Because because the thing is, I think on one hand, Wilbert at first would be polite. Like sixteen would just like. 16 would be kind of, um, like, he'd just be tired and wouldn't want to work, so he'd be just sitting on the points to the yard, and Wilbert would arrive with his coal train, and he'd whistle, you know, very lightly, and be like, um, excuse me, c- could you move off the points, please? And and 16 just kind of, he goes, ugh, and then he, like, looks over at him, you know, almost Rolls like kind of... Exactly. Like, like, it's like the clerk that's, like, just so bored at their oh, job. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, and, and, he, and he's just like, what do you want? And, and, and you know, Wilbert is just like, I- I've, I've got this coal train, and I really mustn't be late. And 16's like, you care about timetables? Come on. It's like, you know, he just he immediately sees Wilbert for what he is, which is just, he's just such a... A rule following goody two shoes, which is the opposite of and what sixteen is. Y- you know what's crazy is that 
I so I've always looked at Wilbur. Maybe it's because of his railway series illustration that became his merchandise face. I've always seen yeah. him as having this very hopeful expression. Like yeah. he he always look he always has his look like he's just dying for his big break. <laughs> like yeah. And I think that this is perfect here because the fact that Wilbur does not have any name at all at this time, he's literally three eight oh six. So he's, he's he's on the edge of his seat, trying every trick. He's in the book. desperately trying to get a name, yeah, like actually have a name, and like he comes over to sixteen and sees that he's just like. Not only is he making things harder for Wilbur, but he's like the opposite in that respect. He doesn't he doesn't want a name. He has like, like I'm imagining like all the other engines at, at the steelworks have like thrown like. 10 or 20 different name options at 16 and he has turned down every single one and he's just like I don't want a name I just want to be 16 16 is cooler 16 sounds better I want to be 16 and it sounds badass <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and it's like when Wilbert meets 16 it, it would be, it would go like this it would be like could you please get off the points and then 16 would be like okay why and he's like because I need to get this code train in He's like, okay, why? And he's like, because I need to make a good impression. Okay, why? Because I really, really, really want to. He would just start name. crying. Yeah, he's like, I want a name. I really want a name. I want it so bad. This isn't gonna last forever. I, I just, I just need my big break. I need my big break, <laughs> and then I'll go into preservation. <laughs> You're kidding, right? All this for a name? Don't, don't you laugh at me? Oh, all this for a name? Oh, ridiculous. I, I've been offered like 20 names and, and I've turned down all of them and Wilbert would just his eye would just twitch he would just be like yeah. what? I, I beg your pardon? like he'd be smiling but he'd be angry inside <laughs> and, 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 internal screaming yeah <laughs> and like would, oh yeah you know uh, they were thinking of naming me after the foreman they were thinking of naming me after the, oh the chairman and, oh. oh you know they uh, well they were going to name me uh, after even the chief mechanic but oh. uh, he died and oh. the others retired so oh. i just told them not to bother and maybe give it to oh, another God. engine i can't hear anymore no 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 <laughs> you've had so many chances and you haven't taken any of them i can't believe it like they would just be such an amazing duo like the progression would be very interesting because at first wilbert would just not understand 16 he'd be like how is he like this um, but then slowly they'd have more conversations because he comes here every day with the call and he would slowly kind of start to get him. And then what would start to happen is he would realize that 16 is in trouble himself. And so Wilbur, as much as he desperately wants to get yeah. a name and get preserved, Wilbur would then realize like, I've got to change this guy's mind, not just for my sake, but for his He's on the way out if he doesn't change his behavior. And so, you know, Wilbur actually starts trying to convince 16 for his own sake. And, um, and 16 just keeps, like, on some level, I think, wouldn't it be so interesting if by this point, like, all 16's Steelworks friends that, that are I was just of, gonna say, like, they're, the numbers are dwindling. I was, I was gonna say that they've started giving up on him. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that could be the case, too. It could be, it could be a mixture of both. Like, some of, like, most of them have given up on 16, and, and, and maybe some of the engines are being scrapped or taken away. And and they and they blame. So they're like getting more insular. They're cutting out. their they're cutting their losses. They're saying, okay, sixteen yeah. is gonna get us all scrapped like that other guy. So we we've got to focus on being useful ourselves. We can't worry about him anymore. We've already lost Martha and Timmy, and we we we've got we've got to keep going. And Let him sleep with the Gronks. Yeah, exactly. It's like they would just finally be like, you know what? Fine. You know, go and take your subversive lifestyle and take it somewhere else. We're not gonna. We're not going to entertain it anymore, right? And so they cut him out, which would really just... I, I feel like at first 16 would be like, well, fine, I don't care. Yeah, whatever, you know? But then, like, it would kind of... It would really hurt deep down because this is the only family he has ever known. And so then you're in this interesting position where it's, like, only Wilbert, who's, like, he's, like, the only one who's still trying to convince 16. But at this point, I feel like if 16 had his whole family, all those steel, Steelworks engines kind of, like, abandon him because they just don't they're they're not willing to try and change his mind anymore i feel like 16 would start to get more reckless and he would start to just be less responsible and more careless and and maybe that's part of the reason he has his accident is because he's just kind of like he's tr he's almost it's a cry for help he's trying to get attention he's like hey i'm about to fall off the tip uh anyone gonna do something about it 
Anyone gonna try to talk me out of it? Hello? It's like, you know, he wouldn't, you know. Yeah. And he wouldn't actually want to get in the accident. He'd be like, all right, that didn't work. I guess I'm going to get back to... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> and, then, like, and then he would fall off. Wouldn't it be heartbreaking if, like, Wilbert was, like, in the yard at the time? Or God. He was, like, he was, like, at the station or whatnot, like, unloading coal. God. Um, yeah, imagine that. He's like, oh, no, 16. And then, like, uh, one of the... All the, other, like, all the other engines would just be kind of standing around, not going to help. And he, Wilbert, for once, would jump headfirst into a situation. God, that would be amazing. Wilbert, like, like he darts off so fast, one of his coal trucks falls over. The foreman's like, hey, come back here! You're breaking the rules! And Wilbert's like, I don't care! And he runs yeah. over to 16 and he actually... Yeah, he, yeah. Like, he, like, goes onto the tip, grabs the trucks real quick, and, like, brings them back, gets 16 up. Yeah, exactly. It would be such a turnaround. It's like, at that very moment, like, I bet Wilbert would, like, I'm imagining he gets the breakdown train, and he's positioned in such a way that he can see 16 in the eyes, and 16, for the first time, we could see he's actually really scared. Help! Like, like in the yeah. actual recording, he'd be like, help! Like, his, his tank would be all messed up, and he's like, I've never been damaged like this before, I didn't, I didn't know that, I, I, I and Wilbert's, like, kind of, Got a mixture of emotions on his face where he's kind of like, I told you, but at the same time, he's also like, God, you poor thing. But it would be such a turnaround. Because at first, Wilbert wants nothing more than 16 to just be gone so that he can finally make the uh, make the reputation for himself he desperately wants. Right, and then Wilbert would feel guilty. He'd feel selfish about trying to put himself and his own career over 16's safety. Exactly. That would be just so sweet. It would just make Wilbert such an impressive character. The fact that he comes around like that. And likewise, in that very moment, they both have their turnarounds. Wilbert decides that advancing his career, his reputation, is not as important as helping out someone in need, especially if it's your brother. Um, and 16 would finally realize he's not invincible and has no one else on his side and he is on thin ice and he might not get repaired. And he's scared, like really scared. And what, what if, what about this? Wilbert still has a, a, has a job, right? Wilbert still has a good few years left to work, but 16's in bad shape. And a heritage railway, the very same one that takes in 16 eventually, comes to Wilbert and says, we want to give you a name and we want to bring you to our railway. And then Wilbert says, oh God, past self forgive me. Look, I would love that. But there's another engine who needs it more. And he, and he saves 16's life. Yeah, I, I would love that. And that's why, in the book, Wilbert says he got better than he deserved. Because he literally gave up everything. Yeah, it would just be like a and little t like a little twitch of resentment in his eye. He'd be like, he got yeah, better than he exactly. deserved. And then, you know, he paid it forward. And then, by doing that, the karma, I guess, led to him being preserved in 1976. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would, you know, that would be great, is that 16 enters uh, preservation, and they hear that the Dean Forest Railway is looking for an engine. So 16 would finally do something for someone else. Yeah, exactly. For the first time in his life, and actually be like, well, you know, austerities are pretty good to come by these days and i know <laughs> one that'll be just right for you yeah yeah exactly it would it would be great it would be so sweet then with like wilbert gets named gb keeling like he finally gets his name yeah <laughs> like it, and the the reverend is there the reverend is the one that christened gb keeling That's so, so crazy to me it's like that, that would that be, be great amazing. is that like Wilbert is there the reverend does his speech and whatnot and like Wilbert's just like he's like crying with like roses you know like yeah. the camera <laughs> yeah like, he You're... finally became prom queen I would, then, like, I would like to thank the academy oh it's like he's he would just be so like that would be his big day 16 would just give like one final eye roll he'd be like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah but he'd also be happy for him you know then, it, it would be the type of thing where it's like imagining like at a big ceremony right you've got the tough guy who doesn't he has his arms folded looking away however then once everyone everyone starts clapping he stands up and starts clapping like he'd be like all right all right and he like he's the one yeah. who actually starts the wave he'd be, he'd, <laughs> he'd be like I'm not going to call you G.B. Keeling. <laughs> not for a while. You're still 3806 to me, but I get used to it. Yeah. How do you feel about the name? I don't care. I don't care. G.B. Keeling, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. G.B. Keeling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God, that would be so great. I love, we've made Wilbert so much more 
overtly emotional than I had expected, and I really love that. It'd be funny, because he'd come to the Dean Forest and be like, It's a mile long! It's a mile long! It's so <laughs> wonderful! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like it would be to him that would be a huge deal. It's so interesting the perspective that different engines have given their circumstances. Like sixteen and Wilbert, if they'd been built, if their build dates were swapped, like they could be like each other. Yeah. Right? Like if sixteen lived through the you know cold, nameless days of dieselization, where you know he's treated like a number and nothing else, he wouldn't want to be called sixteen. He would want to have a name like Wilbert does. And if Wilbert had grown up in the kind of restrictive helicopter parent type, you know, environment, he that would 16 rebel. Grew up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's a, it's like the true. This is really the best Thomas Case study of nature versus nurture. It's just so <laughs> interesting. Well, and then think about this. So then sixteen enters preservation, and then think about all the engines that he left behind that left him behind. Yeah, that's true. They would look at him like being you know refurbished every day in the sheds like ready to be loaded up and taken to the preservation railway and they'd be like seething yeah they'd be like you utter bastard <laughs> yeah how the hell did the numbered one get preserved god that's really scathing like yeah. you know, just that phrasing something about that like it's just so bitter it's like the numbered one like oh but that's the thing i think like there's kind of a nice moral to this. Like, obviously those engines don't deserve to not be preserved and be scrapped. Like, but at the same time, they hold on to this hatred. Like, this pocket of engines that raised 16, essentially, are, just have all this hatred left over from dieselization. They're not, on some level, 16's kind of right in that he need you need to let loose. You need to let a lot of that go. Right. You need to live life. They're, right? they're the worst side of preservation. Yeah. And it's like, it's so interesting because Wilbert is kind of the heroic one in this scenario because he's the only one that didn't give up on 16. Everybody else at the Steelworks was like, we're not dealing with that. We're going to look out for ourselves. And right. that's the, that's, you know, you can't be divided like that. Well, and that, that's you know? kind of a lesson right there is that like, yeah. you can't, you can't just look out for yourself. You have to look out for everyone around you, your family, because at the end, those are the ones who are there for you. Yeah, exactly. And that's the interesting thing is that that 16's family doesn't actually know that lesson, but 16 learns it. And yeah. so, and, and I think 16 would always be this rebellious character, right? I don't uh, he, think would he would never would... lose the hazard stripes. He would never lose yeah. the delivery or anything, no. even in preservation. He, he, loves, he loves how unusual it looks. Even today, it still looks unusual, even in preservation. You know what would be great then is that if he visited the Northwestern Railway. I don't think he could stand the Northwestern. I think he'd be there for a few days and he'd just. He'd get bored. Yeah, he, he'd be bored out of his mind. He'd be like, ugh, all this mushy stuff. Every engineer wants a name. That, that bear guy the other day. Oh, a name's nicer than just a number. It means you really belong. Ugh, gross. Get over it. It's like everyone's constantly talking about their feelings, and it's all mushy here. And it's like, <laughs> it's like you know, he, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't. The Sodor environment is so soft and nice and comfortable, and he wouldn't, it wouldn't fit him. He would need something rough and tumble. That's who 16 is. That would be so cool, though, because 16's never visited the Northwestern. It would be so cool to have him as a visitor. Like... Who do you think, like, what work do you think you would want to do the most? Like, where would, where do you think you would have the Something most tells me he would try to take the Express just to piss off Gordon. God, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he'd want to work with trucks. I think he'd want to, I think he'd want to work with troublesome trucks, honestly. He, he's the type of character, I think 16 is really the type of guy that he, like, he likes getting into bar fights. <laughs> That's, like, yeah. who he is. And so I think, the, like, the trucks, they would biff him, he'd biff them back. Like, it would really be like, and they would all be laughing, even 16. Yeah. Like, that would be, he, he would not, it wouldn't be, like, this nuisance. You know? He'd it go would up be to like, Henry and spook him. He'd, like, he'd, yeah. just be, like, he'd just be gallivanting around the island, maybe even with Bill and Ben following behind, to, like, yeah. just mess with it. Like, Donald and Douglas would absolutely hate this guy. They would, like, yeah. they would pay him out. <laughs> They would, he's counter to everything they believe in. There's the dieselization thing, of course, you know, that goes without saying. And then there's also the fact that, like, 16 doesn't have a great work ethic. He's also highly impractical. And he also, like, he's, his, he doesn't have a lot of real values. He kind of just plays devil's advocate all the time. It's like, he's just, 
he would he's the type of person that would do a really offensive fake Scottish accent and just really <laughs> yeah. and really piss them off. And, you know, he'd, he'd sing, like, really stereotypical songs. <laughs> he'd be like, songs. oh, why don't you kiss my Blarney Stone? And they'd be, like, <laughs> seething red in the face. They'd be like, that's Irish, laddie. <laughs> God, yeah. That would be great. That would totally, that would totally happen. Don't, no, don't, don't do anything, Dougie. Just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait for the right time. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's that yeah. sort of thing. Where he, he really would... He really would take the piss, but at the same time, like, I think once people got used to him, I think they would realize that he's really, like, because he's also, like, really, I think he is pretty, has a lot of endurance and is pretty tough. Like, I think, you know, any job you give him, he's going to do until his fire bars collapse. Like, he's yeah. really going to, like, just because he, like, is going to defiantly do it, especially if you tell him he can't manage the job, he's going to be like, uh, yeah, I can. I'm going to prove it to all of you. I, uh, yeah, but, but even before we recorded this episode, that was the mentality. Like, if you had, like, hot wires over water, <laughs> like, he would be the one to, like, go and fix them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He would, like, roll up his sleeves and be like, step aside, I got bitches. this covered. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's totally that. Like, he would, he would be And then be he'd the get one... shocked and sent to the ER and, <laughs> and die. And then he'd be like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> God damn it. Or he would get out of the ER, and, and it, when he's rolled out in a wheelchair, he'd be like, worth it. And then, he, and then he'd pass out. <laughs> that so, would, he'd come out with aviator glasses. <laughs> The doctors would be like, we don't know where he got those. He didn't come in with them. Like, <laughs> it's that sort of thing. <laughs> like, he really is. 16 is a badass. But, like, also, he's not, he, like, he is and he isn't. He's he's less of a badass and more of a jackass. And when I say jackass, <laughs> yes. I mean literally, literally from jackass. Yeah. Like, he was the type of person that would be on jackass and do all those stunts. Like, that's what 16 would he do. He would make viral I mean, videos of, like, diving headfirst into a, yeah. <laughs> like a pool of nails. Yeah, exactly. And it would just... Yeah. And I just love the idea of pairing him with Wilbert, like, even if they're not on the same railway. I love the notion of just... In that video, it, he would just... He would knock on his door and just be like, Hey, Wilbert, I need you to hold the camera while I dive into this pile of nails. And Wilbert's just like, Wait, hold on, what? I, I don't think you should. And, and he's like, Alright, hold on, just stay there. I'm gonna jump off this diving board. No, no, I don't think you really should. I think it's a bad idea. I'm not going to film this. I'm not going to be a party to this. Three... Two, one. Like, it would be that sort of deal. Where it's like, you know, he's just... he's He drags Wilbur along for all of his ridiculous schemes. And Wilbur never gets hurt. It's always 16 doing something stupid. But it's like, that's just who he is. He loves the thrill. He loves chasing the thrill. I'd, I'd like to think that at least one or two of his Gronk friends got preserved at the yeah. same railway with him. And they just get up to trouble. Yeah, no, I would love that. I would just... I just love the notion of just... 16 going to just these wild parties with Gronks and just getting up to getting up to shenanigans. It'd just be so perfect. Especially it's funny because he, he would be the kind of guy that if Diesel 10 showed up to the party to crash it and like cause trouble, he would kick Diesel 10 out. <laughs> I think we're going to say he would kick Diesel 10's ass. <laughs> well, I mean, he would. He And then he would kick him out. Yeah. But it's like, I could, I, I could see it going a few different ways. On one hand, I would say like, 16 would be the type that everyone else in the room, they would be fine with any other Diesel, but then Diesel 10 comes in. And 16, and they would all be scared. They'd be like, oh, jeez, that's Diesel 10, oh, my God. And 16 would be like, hey, I got this, I got this. Hey, Diesel 10, showed up to my party, huh? You got good taste. Um, you know, and, you know, like, he would actually, like, not be afraid Make of yourself at home. He's, like, way too fearless. Like, he's just does not understand danger. <laughs> yeah. um, but on the on the other hand... It would be really cool if, like, 16 is, like, actually got a strong sense of justice. And so it's like if, you know, if he's got, like, tons of diesels at his party, because he, because there's... Like Duncan, I think he would have that sense, but yeah. I, I agree. And it, yeah, and it's like, I, I imagine, like, he'd be throwing a party, and you've got all these diesels here, right? But they're good diesels. And, like, his old steam engine friends at the Steelworks wouldn't know the difference, but 16 can see it. But the minute that, a, that an evil diesel comes in, he would stop the music. And be like, get out of this party. Get out. I have steam engine friends here. Get out. And Diesel 10 would be like, you can't tell me to get out. I just did. Get out. Or we're throwing down in the front yard. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and, and, it, and, he, and he might actually hold his own. 
But it's like, he's fearless, right? And he's going to stick up for people. Like, 16 might be really rough around the edges. He might be reckless. He might not really <laughs> He'd go understand. to Diesel 10 and just sock him in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would. And then it would turn into this huge fight. And everyone at the party would say, fight, fight, fight! And then the police would have to be called. That's, like, who he is, right? But yeah. it, would be, it would be badass. It would be stupid. But it would also be heroic. Because, like, <laughs> Poor Wilbert would be sobbing at the police station. <laughs> Why do I come to these things? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> that, that, that is 16 in a nutshell. That I, really I, is. I, yeah. I think that... This has been absolutely terrific. Yeah. <laughs> we really... I, I think we hit him on the head. Yeah, I think we did. And I love how he kind of got older throughout the story. He evolved, where he goes from being the rebellious teen who is, like, stealing his parents' booze to being, like, the guy who gets in bar fights, but he's also kind of someone you want on your side in a duel. <laughs> he almost kind of goes... He almost kind of goes from Thomas to developing into someone more like Duncan. Yeah, it's interesting. He actually gets principles. Because I think early on he wouldn't have them. I think early on he would just... He'd be wearing a leather jacket and mascara just to piss off the squares. But then later on, he'd be wearing a leather jacket and mascara because it's who he is. And that would be the difference. Like, he would look the yeah. same, but he's he's doing it for, for more genuine, true-to-himself reasons now. He's figured out who he is. And he did that through bucking convention his whole life and figuring out which conventions work. And he'll never admit to actually liking conventions. Duncan will admit to it immediately. 16 will be like, oh, it's not a convention. Uh, no, no, it's not a, it's just a, no, it's a new thing I'm doing, you know. Uh, it, looks yeah. like, it looks a bit like a convention, but it's not, trust me. It's like, you know, it's that sort of thing. He does mature throughout this story we've woven, and I do really love it. So, yeah. And, you know, I, not only did 16 mature, but Wilbert did, too. I think yeah. we really did him a lot of justice, would, too. Like, we almost did a character gallery on him in this. I love Wilbert as this kind of re- very fussy, kind of very, very dedicated, very, very, very nervous and very kind of goody two-shoes character. Like, there's something so charming about that. I could so see that for him. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think sixteen has just the potential to be such a really funny character. You could make but... you could make movies about this guy, like yeah. with, with all the with all the content. I mean, I I think that we've definitely set every angle of sixteen that there could be. Like yeah, he's he's brilliant. So I mean, I can't wait to for number seventeen. Honestly, yeah, we'll see uh, who that is. Point. <laughs> And yeah, it, and it but, will not uh, be whatever engine is number seventeen. So yes. no one get your heart set on that. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. that, that trend is over. I hope. I really. Oh hope. yes, but um, and thank you guys so much for listening. I'm sure that sixteen is going to be a character that a lot of people have a lot of opinions on, and oh, I'm yeah. really dying to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, I'm very curious um, to see you know what people think of him. I mean, this is our take. I'd love to hear what yours is because you know it could really be you know it could be a million different ways. Yeah, no, there's a lot of variety in how you could perceive this guy. Anyway, so without further ado, I've been Master of Lemons, aka Lemmy. And I'm here, the Japanese train, a.k.a. Matt. And thanks for watching, everyone. See you guys in the next one.